Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be taking a look at the latest from Proxmox. This is version 7.4, and I think the current version that I'm running is 0.3. So 7.4.3. So let's dive in a little bit and talk about it and, and see what it's really offering us today. So the first thing is uh, Proxmox 7.4 was released on March the 23rd of 2023. It hasn't been out all that long, but let's talk about some of the features that it has. Proxmox is based on Debian 11.6, so it, it comes, but it doesn't use the Debian kernel. They provide their own. And you can, uh, the default is to install kernel 5.15, which of course is the long-term support version of the kernel. There's also uh, KMU 7.2. Lexi is 5.0.2, and, and ZFS is 2.1.9, and Ceph uh, comes default as Quincy, and that'll be 17.2.5. There's some other options for that, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. One of the, one of the enhancements to the UI is that they now offer a dark theme that's based on the crisp light theme. So it will automatically detect if your browser is set for dark mode or not, and will automatically switch. However, you can also manually control it as well. So if you do prefer the light theme, you can do that. There's some other themes that you can use as well. One of the other major features is that you can now download your task logs. So if you want to be able to uh, check those over, you know, on your own, on your own system, using whatever tools you might use to do that, you can. There's also some changes to the way it sorts uh, the virtual machines. You can either sort it by the name or you can sort it by the virtual machine ID, your choice. Uh, there's also been changes made to the uh, high availability manager, and that can be switched into maintenance now without having to do a reboot. So that, that should help a little bit, I would think. Some optional features, though, if you're using newer hardware and you want to take advantage of that newer hardware, uh, you can install kernel 6.2, and that's what I did. Uh, I, I, because the machines I have are, I have a uh, 12th gen. And so, yeah, that, that's, I, I would prefer to run on the 6.2 hardware, which has better support for that chipset. Also, you can change out Ceph for Pacific 16.2.11 if you prefer. Some of the other features that it has is that Lexi now supports uh, building of uh, containers using RISC-V. Either 32-bit or 64-bit architectures can be done. There's also a bulk stop and bulk uh, shutdown procedure. So if you if you're you know wanting to shut down your VM guests, uh, maybe you're doing a bulk upgrade on the VMs. You can do that. Or uh, there's also additional uh, localization translations uh, that you can use as well if you. If you have languages other than that, there, you, you probably will need to look at the README file. There's a pretty long list. In a, in, a, in a nutshell, yeah, there's a lot of other minor changes as well. So again, the README would be a good way to do that. If you already have Proxmox installed, the 7.4 update will install automatically on your next update cycle. My impressions of it is it's not a... I wouldn't call it a significant release, but it certainly has quite a few features in it that I find useful, uh, particularly getting away from the light mode. Wow, that is, that's like having a flashlight shine in your eyes in, a, in the room where I do most of my work. So yeah, it, and so it's kind of nice to see the dark mode. On my screens, I'm also using tags. Tags came about in 7.3. That's not anything new in 7.4. So uh, with that, uh, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at Proxmox 7.4. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know if you're using it in the comments below. Be interested to hear what your experiences are with it. Hope to see you all again real soon and bye for now.